Hi there, my name is Paul Halliday, and in this video, we'll be looking at the Stencil Compiler. It's a tool built by the Ionic Framework team, and it allows us to build fast web applications using web components. I have to imagine it's going to be the basis of future versions of Ionic Framework, which should allow Ionic to work with things like React, Vue, or any front-end framework that you desire. The awesome thing is, because they are simply web components, no framework at all would also be a good alternative. But going forward, let's take a look at the Stencil Starter. So we can use git clone on HTTPS, github.com, slash ionic dash team slash stencil dash starter dot git. This will clone us the starter repository. And providing we spell it correctly, we will then be able to CD into Stencil Starter. Before going any further, we can run npm install to install any dependencies inside of the project. And then of course, we can run this with npm run dev. This will serve our application inside of the browser and watch for any file changes. So to get started, let's take a look at our Stencil config. Inside of our stencil config.js, we have a following list of components inside of our bundle. If we want to declare a new component, we have to add it to this component array. Before adding a new component though, let's take a look at how it's defined and what a component looks like. If we take a look under the source components my name directory, we have a file called myname.tsx. And this is a common theme across all of the Stencil components. Everything runs as a TSX file. And if you've used things like React in the past, this should be no surprise as to what our application component looks like. The component is declared with a decorator. And we import that from Stencil Core. We can assign this a tag, which we saw earlier, of my name. The style URL for this component is under myName.scss. But in a similar sense to Angular, we don't have to define a style URL. We could, of course, define these manually. Next, we head over to our export class of myName. And the first thing we see is two properties. Now, prop is imported from Stencil Core. And essentially, this is a read-only input into this component. So this allows us to have a one-way binding inside of the component. So properties allow us to have that input on the element, but we can also have local component state by using at state. This could be called my variable. Perhaps you'd have this as string. And we'd need to import state from stencil core. As you can see inside of our index.html, we're defining our component the same way we define any other component in a modern day framework. We have a xhtml tag with property types here, such as first and last. That way you can see that we have my name is stencil.js here on screen, and that's because we have those input property types here on the component. We also have events that we can hook into similar to component will load. And perhaps we want to log something out to the console, such as loading. You can then see when we refresh our page, we do get that loading inside of the console. And all of these things allow for a consistent and nice to use web component library. Stencil is still relatively new, so I may have got some of these things wrong as it's not currently released. But this video should hopefully serve to add to the conversation about where the direction of Ionic and web components are going in the future. If you're interested in Ionic and you'd like to check out my course, Learn Ionic 3 from scratch, don't forget to check out paulhalliday.io. And of course, a link for that is inside of the description. You can use the coupon code HALF to get the course for £8 at the moment, so it's exceptionally cheap for about 9-10 hours of content.
So it's certainly a worthwhile investment if you're looking to up your Angular and Ionic skills. Until then, my name is Paul and I'll see you very soon in that next video.